Welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Bernard J. Williams. He is an attorney, and his firm is called Company Counsel. He's managing partner with Company Counsel. Bernard, welcome to Significant TV. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm pleased to be here. I am glad to see you. You know, we uh, saw each other a few months ago. We were remarking in February when the weather was wickedly cold. It's true. <laughs> um, you were on a panel and I was moderating. And um, at that time, you were sharing information for entrepreneurs on the importance of legal counsel. Uh, that's right. That's one of the things that I really take a lot of pleasure in doing. Um, you know, I've been uh, an, an attorney for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I first started my practice, I was in big law firms and we were representing big corporate clients. Mm -hmm. And the, the challenges were, were complex and uh, the, the work was really interesting. Uh, but I found that I, I didn't always feel like I was making as big of an impact as I, as I really wanted to make. Uh, and, um, and in contrast, now that I'm working with small business owners, uh, you know, the being able to answer a question, being able to help to issue spot, being able to, the, 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 the things that I can provide to a small business owner I just make, could be the difference between thriving and, 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 and not. Uh, right, so, uh, right. so I just, yeah, so I love having the opportunity to appear on panels, uh, whether mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, a, a panel like the one that we were on or other educational uh, formats, mm -hmm. um, to just provide whatever sort of insight I can to help small business owners beat the odds. That's one of the things I love doing. I love, I love that phrase, beat the odds, right? Because statistically speaking, one in five businesses, you know, less than two years, they're gone. It's true. And so your name in a lot of ways says it, says it all. Folks do need counsel and um, a company having counsel makes a big difference. So I love that name. Well, love thank you very name. much. <laughs> and congratulations on being uh, in law and business for 15 years. That is that is remarkable. Thank you. So it's always interesting to find out what sort of got people um, into entrepreneurship. And given that you were in corporate America, how did you, what was that significant moment when you decided, you know what, I'm going to do this <laughs> on my own mm -hmm. um, for clients of my, my choice? Uh, that's a great question. What, what I found when I was in corporate America uh, mm -hmm. was that I had a day job uh, and a, a, in a corporate law firm job, uh, when, when you call it a day job, it really is a 24-hour kind of a job. <laughs> okay, so that's why it's a day job. <laughs> it's a, it's a, full, a day full day. day. Right. right, okay, we're clear on that. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and and certainly there was, you know, intellectually it was stimulating and uh, it, it was all the things that, you know, th that I could have asked for it to be, mm -hmm. uh, except that I, I didn't feel like, I felt that there was something missing and I couldn't quite put a finger on it. Okay. Uh, and, um, and I think what it was, I, I needed to, I needed for the buck to stop with me for something. I needed mm. to be completely in charge of something uh, and you know, win or lose, uh, success or, or, or failure, I wanted to feel like I was putting all of myself into something mm -hmm. in a way that um, th that I felt wasn't really a part of the experience in, in, a, mm -hmm. in, in corporate America. Okay. Uh, I wanted to feel that sense of ownership. Okay. Uh, so, um, so what I did at that point actually, and this is in roughly 2008, uh, I decided that I, I would take my love of um, of education and of mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and just go and mentor people. Go and uh, okay. I, I had an education business, mm -hmm. uh, and um, ran it for several years. And, and I thought at the time, uh, you know, the law has been great, uh, but that, but that's but now I'm in education, and now mm -hmm. I'm you know and now I'm a business owner, and this is this is what I'm doing, and I'm not looking back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sure enough, uh, everybody <laughs> knew me as an attorney, uh, uh -huh. and I was the attorney who ran a business. Uh, so when people would come to me, they would come to me for for legal advice and um, management consulting advice and things you know related to to their businesses and not related to their educations. Mm. Uh, so, so I found that you know even as I was trying to define a niche in this, right. this rebrand yourself, yeah, right. yeah, right. I, you know, I, you know they, they kept pulling me back in. Ah, so. <laughs> okay. Um, but but what was really uh, rewarding uh, and. Um, an eye-opening for me about that experience was that was the first time that I that I realized a few things. Uh, mm. One, I realized how similar some of the legal problems were that mm. small businesses experienced to some of the big businesses that I had been representing for the, the previous 10 years. Mm. Um, and I also realized just 
you know, there's a lot of information out there. There are a lot of great nonprofits and great resources, and you know, but there's also a lot of misinformation. Yes. Uh, and there are a lot of you know Facebook message boards that have you know <laughs> <laughs> incorrect information. <laughs> incorrect information, uh, we'll, we'll say, uh, or information that might be correct in some situations, but not in others. Ah, um, now that sounds like a legal disclaimer. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there's a legal disclaimer attached to all of this. <laughs> um, but, but you know, but what I realized was that it's very difficult for the small business owner to differentiate the mm -hmm. you know the 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 good from the bad mm -hmm. uh, out there, or without somebody that they're working with on an ongoing basis, to can help them to to discern the difference, can help them mm -hmm. to, to issue spot, can help mm -hmm. them to um, not only identify the right issues but then make the right decisions. Right, right. Yeah. Well. That actually leads me to one of the things that you brought. Um, you were identifying before we got on the set that there are a lot of fears that entrepreneurs have. And I wondered if you could connect that to what you do in your business and how you work with entrepreneurs. Sure. Uh, so, um, so this is uh, a study that I, that I found recently. I do a lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of education mm -hmm. about, about small business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and this is a study that, that asks, uh, you know, what are the things that the people who own small businesses are most concerned about? What keeps mm -hmm. them up at night? Mm -hmm. uh, what do they think uh, could be the reason that they fail if they fail? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, you know, without going into, into all seven of them, one of the mm -hmm. things that jumps out to me is employees leaving. Oh, uh, and, employees um, leaving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you know, this is, as, as businesses grow, uh, one of the trends you tend to see is, you know, a lot of times someone will start out as a, uh, as a solo uh, owner, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as they become busy, they'll, they'll add staff, and, mm -hmm. and they'll continue to grow. And as they scale, sometimes they'll put people into positions uh, that, um, that, are, that are key positions, that are, that are right. fundamental. Right. Uh, and what happens when that person that you've relied upon isn't, isn't there anymore? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there are a lot of issues associated with that. Uh, there's, um, you know, what happens if that employee, that key employee, starts a business and competes with you? Oh, right. Uh, or uh, goes mm -hmm. to another competitor uh, that's mm -hmm. already in existence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what happens if they try to steal your customers, mm -hmm. uh, take your ideas? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, what happens if they uh, leave under bad circumstances and, mm -hmm. and there are allegations of um, illegality? Mm -hmm. Ill illegality, uh, discrimination, uh, uh, violation of other employment-related regulations. Uh, there's um, yeah, so the the scenario of a, of, a, of an employee, and particularly a key employee, leaving a, a business can can cause a lot of fear uh, to to most businesses. Absolutely, I, I'm I'm getting scared right now. I, and I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so what so what happens? I mean, what's the connection then to the legal? People now are recognizing this fear. Right. How can you help? Sure, and, and I'm glad that you asked it that way because mm -hmm. the way that I that I'd like to work with my clients is it, 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 it's really a two part um, uh, process. I mean, there's mm -hmm. the the issue spotting, there's the identifying uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the problem, um, but we need to go beyond that to, to actually proposing solutions that, that make sense for that business owner. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same solutions won't necessarily um, work for different business owners depending on the industry or the the, the, the particular facts of the situation, uh, but. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to try to do is, is work on an ongoing basis with my clients mm -hmm. uh, so that we can anticipate things that, that may happen ah, good point. Uh, and uh, you know, good come point. up with ways that, that we'll handle it when it comes. Uh, and I find that the more prepared we are, uh, the more we're able to anticipate uh, when a problem comes, mm -hmm. the, the, more cost of, the more cost effectively we can address that problem uh, and the better prepared we are to, uh, to make sure there's a positive outcome uh, for wow. the business owner. Wow, that, so, that's a great example. That's a great example. And I imagine one that as you're working with potential clients, you really have to discern whether or not they're able to kind of think about a longer term relationship with company counsel, right. literally and right. figuratively, um, so that they in fact can get those benefits of planning, anticipation, solutions, support. And that's really, um, one of the things that uh, that is characteristic of my ideal client, mm -hmm. uh, I um, I get phone calls all the time. I got okay. three phone calls this morning. Okay. Um, with emergencies, uh, and uh, you know, it, it's I need a I need a contract done, you know, um, today, mm -hmm. this weekend. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need a licensing agreement done in the next seven days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but these are people that you know that I've never heard from before. I've never mm -hmm. you know I don't know them. I don't know mm -hmm. their company. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the situation, uh, mm -hmm. so you know. So while I can certainly try to do my best to uh, to help them, uh, 
I'd be much better able to help them. It, you know, if this is somebody that I had an ongoing relationship with, right, uh, and right. if we could have anticipated a month leading into it that, hey, you're going to need a licensing agreement mm -hmm. uh, because this is the kind of transaction that you're contemplating, and this is right. how we're going to we're going to set it up. And mm -hmm. you know, if I'm able to work with somebody uh, in, in advance of getting into a crisis. Uh, hopefully to avoid the crisis or at least a better position ourselves for it. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, so, <laughs> uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so the people that I enjoy working with the most are the ones that, that know that they need help uh, and that are willing to take more of a proactive and more of a, more of a long view uh, wow. to, uh, to that. Very powerful. That is probably a great segue into an award that you received. Would you share that sure. with the audience? Because sure. your style, the way that you work, um, earned you uh, a placement as one of the top lawyers for 2016, as published by Philadelphia Magazine. Tell us more about that. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, um, so yeah, this is an award. It's called. It's published by Super Lawyers, and you know, mm -hmm. it's also reprinted in in Philadelphia Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, in 2016, I was awarded the you know the Rising Star. Uh, one of the rising stars, uh, you know, as part of that recognition program, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, only the top two, two point five percent of attorneys in Pennsylvania uh, had this distinction, and, and mm -hmm. it's across you know various uh, industries, um, mm -hmm. environmental law, um, mm -hmm. securities law, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, my distinction happened to be in the area of business law uh, because okay. my focus is on small businesses. Great, uh, great. but um, but yeah, I'm really uh, really happy about this. Oh, uh, I, I just congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I appreciate that it's something that, that reflects um, what other attorneys in the industry you know, have heard of me and, and, mm -hmm. and, and know about dealing with me. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a peer recognition award. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I know that my clients mm -hmm. value uh, yes, uh, what absolutely. I do. Yes, absolutely. But to hear from other attorneys as well is uh, just you know, kind of a nice, nice thing to, <laughs> to have heard. Absolutely. It's, it's a great recognition. So I, it is hard for me to believe that 15 minutes has already gone by, and wow. we do have a lot of entrepreneurs on the show as guests and certainly viewing the show. In terms of intellectual property, what, what might be uh, maybe two things that people might want to consider? Um, and I'd like maybe the 30-second version. Sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so, in terms of intellectual property, uh, mm -hmm. the the two things that you want to consider, and there are, there are lots of lots different of elements, things, right? right. Uh, but but you want to think about um, making sure that you're not infringing upon someone else's intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so before uh, copying and pasting something, or before being oh, inspired, it's uh, so easy by an to idea. copy and paste though. Uh, it, it is uh, okay. sometimes the easiest okay. things lend themselves to, <laughs> to the most difficult. Okay. Okay. Um, but, uh, but that's just one example. I mean, there are, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're not infringing upon someone else's intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing uh, is is the corollary. Uh, you want to make sure that your own intellectual property rights. Are, are protected so that no one else uh, is able to um, to use them for their own purposes or to mm -hmm. uh, cause confusion in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, that would um, that would lead to uh, fewer sales for your company uh, to the uh, or, or somehow be detrimental to, to your company. Mm -hmm. uh, so making sure you're not infringing on someone else's rights and then proactively making sure that your own rights are protected uh, wow. are two of the things that, that you always want to keep in mind in terms of intellectual property. That, you know, Bernard, you said that really in a succinct way, very clear way. I love the connection to, again, I'm going to go back to the name of your co your company, Company Council. Um, how can people get in touch with you? That's certainly a question. Sure. Uh, I can be reached by telephone or email uh, or by my website. Okay. Uh, my the website? Sure. The, the website is www.companycouncil.law. Dot law. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to, to speak to anybody that has an interest, anybody that's uh, a current small business owner or that's uh, mm -hmm. thinking about becoming a small business owner mm -hmm. uh, or, um, or anyone who's ready to expand. I mean, that's one of the things that I, mm -hmm. that I love talking to, uh, to people about. Right. And if you're ready to expand, you probably are fitting that profile of wanting to plan, wanting to develop a relationship, exactly. wanting to anticipate the problems, and having some solution in legal counsel. And, and, and really getting serious about taking that yeah. next step. Uh, yeah. and, and I love to be a part of that. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Good, good. Well, there you have it. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. Our guest today is Bernard Williams, and he is a managing partner of Company Council. He's here in the Philadelphia area, 
And you can find him on the web at companycouncil.law. So join us for our next episode as we continue to explore with significant entrepreneurs.